Hi, everybody. It's Julie Huck, and I'm here with the Agent of Change platform. Happy 2024. This is actually my first video this year. It's been a really busy end of the year and beginning of the year. There's been so much going on on a personal level and a business level. And I'm just really excited that the first guest in 2024 is none other than my husband, Ed Huck. Hey, Jules. Hey, I asked Ed to be here today with us because he uh, has so much to share. He's been on an incredible personal growth journey, and I've been noticing how much it's impacted him as a person, our family life, and our business life. And I wanted him to talk to us a little bit about um, what he's been doing and how he's been going about that. So I'm thankful that you joined us, Ed. And uh, it's kind of off the cuff today. He doesn't know exactly what we're what I'm going to ask him. Uh, so last year was a big year for you, right? Uh, yeah, personally Person. and personally, for sure. And yeah. professionally, we had, a, we had a great year. I mean, our, our sales were down a little bit. Um, and actually, so, so were everybody's. Uh, but um, personally, it was a yeah, huge year. Yeah, so last couple, last I would say last couple of years for sure have, have really been huge. Okay, well tell 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 everybody about um, what what that means. Why was it a big year? What what kinds of things did you do? Yeah, so I'm finally doing for the last couple of years really diving into growing my personal mm -hmm. self and doing a lot of things that all the books and all the platforms and all the podcasts have been saying to do and really implementing them uh, into my daily life. And I've mm -hmm. really noticed it's, it's, it's changed the way I approach my day, the way I look at my day, uh, my interactions with my spouse and the kids and our team members and, and customers and realtors for that matter too. Okay. So what did you do? Yeah, so a couple, a lot of things, but um, some of the bigger ones were I joined a, a group called Project U, which was I did that a year and a half ago, where it works on yourself. So it's project, and the U is just it's a big U, and it, it forces you to look into the mirror. And we did the first time I went through the the, the class. They have one whole quarter on health and wellness. And they have another whole qu quarter on leadership, another whole quarter on um, uh, wealth, financial wealth, and, and then another quarter on spirituality. Mm -hmm. So I, I really got focused in on my health and you know, eating habits, which we were in, we do a lot of that anyway, but it really kind of helped take, take it to another level. And then, um, I started journaling, you know, ever since being at Kelly Williams, every bold that we've been through, which is a bold is a class that Kelly Williams has. That's an eight week class. And the first thing they do, they give you a journal. Mm -hmm. It seemed to be, you know, all these classes that we go to at, at Kelly Williams has been, here's a journal, here's a journal. And I never cracked one open. So I, I committed to going all in when I, when I took this class and um, signed up for Project Two. And one of the things they suggest is through journaling. So I really started to do that, mm -hmm. which I'm a little bit of a techie. So it was fun. So I got to buy one of these, you know, little, little tablets that you get to get to write in. Um, so I didn't actually have to do a journal by, by, you know, in a book. So that has been awesome. So I do that every morning and it's basically, I use the five minute journal technique of, it asks you basically just five questions, you know, what, basically a lot of things around gratitude. What'd you do yesterday? What do you, you expect? You know, what went great yesterday? Um, what are you excited for today? Those, those kind of questions. And then uh, also med uh, med meditating. Well, wait a second. Can I ask you a little bit about journaling? Because sure. um, what, like, what has journaling done for you? What is the purpose of journaling? Because you mentioned that everybody tells us that we should journal and they always yeah, have. Love it. Um, what does it do for you? It, it resets your mind mm -hmm. into the possibilities, I think, and shows you, you know, my, one of my big challenges is I measure 
the gap from where I am to where I want to get all the time instead of measuring the gain from where I came to where I am now. Mm -hmm. And it helps us put it in perspective that, oh my gosh, look at all these things I need to be, I should be grateful for. And I am grateful for, but it helps you start your day with that in mind. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I write in there, you know, all the things I'm grateful for. And it, the first couple of times I did it, it was tough, you know, I think, it, but it's like anything, once you start getting in the rhythm of it and you can't, you, they challenge you not to write the same thing. I'm, I'm grateful for the weather. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's a sunny day. Well, what about the sunny day are you grateful for? I'm so mm -hmm. excited today because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to feel so much energy and excitement when I walk outside and walk around the block with the dog in the sunshine. You know, and and when you say it that that deep of a level, now all of a sudden, when I just said that, I got a little, I felt a little light inside. I'm like, oh my gosh, that that sounds amazing. I'm gonna feel, you know, that one little activity. Now I'm just gonna go. Yes, not a great. It's a great yeah, day. Like, I don't know. We haven't what seen the world you're living in right now in Cleveland. It's not very sunny. We haven't seen the sun in yeah ten days, but hey, but you're thinking is, about those days when we do <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the point is taking it and going deep with it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, one of the things I do is I write about you and the boys and I've shared this with you before, but I, you know, I say, okay, I'm grateful for Julie because not just I'm grateful for Julie, but because the way she showed up for the boys yesterday and, um, uh, made a point to get down and talk with Connor about X. Right. So now all of a sudden I'm reinforcing, right you know, that we've got this great relationship and that, um, I notice I'm noticing these little things mm -hmm. that if you don't take just five, it, it takes under 10 minutes to do this every morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it again, just reminds me of, Oh my gosh, what a beautiful thing I saw yesterday when you did that. Right. And, uh, if you could, and I do that for our team members too, that's one, one thing I'm grateful for, for them. I pick a different team member mm -hmm. um, every yeah. day. Uh, anyway, just, it just helps you reset your brain to see all these things you're grateful for. And again, like all the books say, and all the speakers say, the more grateful you are, mm -hmm. you've reset your energy. Now, all you're doing is throwing out all this positive, great energy. As I walk out of the house and I go pump, get my gas and I pay the person mm -hmm. at the gas station, you know, for the pop or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you're just radiating all this positive, loving energy, and it comes back to you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I was going to ask you that. How has, like, how has it impacted you um, in the real estate world, in your professional everyday business life? I just think people hear it. You know, I noticed, and, and I didn't mention this, but the last time I was in the airport, I was smiling at more people and they're smiling right back. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of weird, you know, you're making eye contact with these people and they're smiling and you're smiling. And, uh, mm -hmm. again, I just think it's, um, and which of course then relates even to your, our customers mm -hmm. that we're on the phone with, they can even hear it in your voice, mm -hmm. you know, the other agents that you're dealing with on a daily basis, we might have a tough situation that we need to negotiate our way through. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but if you come at it from being open and, you know, loving and caring and just feeling this energy, as opposed to, you know, if you come at it from, I'm feeling crappy this isn't going to go the way we need it. You know, I can't believe this customer is trying to hose my customer by, you know, doing X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to go anywhere. You yeah. know, our, our clients are, are hiring us uh, for, to be expert negotiators and to be, you know, um, yes, we want to be on their side. And mm -hmm. at the same point, we need to make sure we keep these sales together. Right. So if you can bring that positive, flow of energy um, and compassion to the situation, um, you know, nine times out of 10, it's, it's going to end in, in a, uh, a positive impact or positive fashion. Well, I mean, and, and I think that there's a lot of, there were a lot of changes that happened in the market last year. There were, there was a lot of uncertainty. <clears throat> um, some agents had a great year. Some agents really, really struggled and, you know, it's always our choice on what are we going to focus on because what we focus on expands and what you're saying is you implemented this daily habit it was a, 
a, a big a personal growth, actual achievement for you, because like you said, you've you've been wanting to do this for years and you finally um, implemented it, um, probably by some accountability because you joined a coaching program, which is yeah. always a big part of mm -hmm. any growth, whether it's business growth or personal growth. You had some accountability. Yeah. Um, you created a habit and you started doing it every day. Uh, which helped you instead of being focused on um, the the insecurity or the worries or the nature of the market or not knowing what would happen the rest of the year, you focused on um, the really great things happening both personally and professionally. And you're saying that energy came back to you. Correct. So you felt that energy every day in a very positive way instead of coming into the office with that negative energy. Yeah. 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 So what else did you implement in 2023 and how did it impact you? You started saying meditation. Yeah. So that actually probably happened in 2022, but really okay. got ramped up in, in 2023 where uh, at least once a day, hopefully twice a day, mm -hmm. sitting back and meditating, which, you know, when you first hear what, when I first heard that, I thought it was a little airy fairy, you know, um, I'm busy. Who the heck has time to take? You're supposed to take 20. The type of meditation that I practice is called transcendental meditation. You're supposed to take 20 minutes twice a day where you just do this. And the, the goal is to slow your mind down. So you know, we all hear that little voice in our head, right? So if you don't hear the voice in the head, well, I'm sure everybody knows that there's a voice in your head, right? So if you, you, Take I don't 10 know. Seconds. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't assume that everybody yeah, point. So I think so, that's definitely a, um, something to explain a tiny bit. Yeah. So if everybody would just take one second now and say the word blue in your head, right? You can make your self say blue in there or think about a German shepherd. Okay. I can make my mind think about a German shepherd, right? So I, I'm in there and we're always narrating our whole story all day long right you know okay, i have to do this next day. i gotta go pick up the kids i gotta go to the dry cleaners i have to do that that's your voice your voice also says stuff like you're a loser because you're not getting this done and you know you should have gotten that done and no oh i shouldn't have eaten that fourth piece of chocolate you know th those kind of things so i think when you put it in that context hopefully everyone knows what i'm talking about that's the right. voice that i'm talking about and it's constantly running Sometimes you're aware of the voice and sometimes you're not aware of the voice, but it's always running. And um, what I've learned to, to appreciate is that, you know, I hear this voice, but I'm not the voice, meaning that um, if somebody's talking, if this voice and this, this, um, this thing is talking in my head, which is actually my mind, my mind's talking, who's listening, right? And the who that's listening is, you know, I, I've heard Gary Keller say this probably 10 years ago, and I just finally really got it within the last mm -hmm. couple of years is I'm a spiritual being having a human experience as opposed to a human being having a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. and what that means to me is that huh. the person, the, the being that's listening to the voice is my spirit. It's huh. my soul, it's my spirit. Um, and, uh, it's listening to this mind narrate all this crazy stuff. Some of it's good stuff, right? Some of it's bad stuff. And the point about meditation is to help slow that down is to separate my mind when it's just always running constantly from letting my spirit shine through and, uh, that's been my goal is to, to just take the 20 minutes uh, a couple times a day. And I always used to think that who, I'm swamped. I don't, I, my to-do list never goes down. If I has 20, if it has 20 things on it right now, and it has more than 20, but if it did and I knock out five of them today, I'm putting on six new ones. So, you know, I used to get stressed out about that. Right. I, one of my old coaches that was my thing. I needed to work through how do I let that go, right? That, that mm -hmm. overwhelming feeling of never getting my to-do list down mm -hmm. and feeling guilty 
that I'm leaving the office now to go home and the right. list isn't done. And then once I get home, I feel guilty because I didn't finish my list, but now I'm with the kids. Um, you know, if I stay late at the office to keep working on the list, now I'm not home with a family. So I feel guilty about that. So there's this never ending struggle in our heads. And I think so many of us have some kind of struggle. If it's not that it's, I guarantee everybody listening to this has got some struggle that they're, they could pinpoint right now that's going on in their head. Yeah. And the meditating has really helped me um, unseparate that meaning that um, sure. I've got all this stuff on my to-do list and, and sure. I want to go home and be with my family and sure. I want to go hang out with my friends at a basketball game or whatever. It's I've, I've really, it's really helped me learn to, be where my feet are. So um, realizing that being present in the situation right here where I am right now is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then being aware that if I am present or if I'm not a pre not present yeah, uh, has been huge. And then for me, slowing down has been the way to realize, am I aware that I'm not being present? You mm -hmm. know, and so we talked about this um, on something else. Um, somebody asked me my word for the year. Mm -hmm. This year, my word is present. So I mean, my word is slowing down. Mm -hmm. I had to let them know that the way I got there was the word last year was being aware. So I wanted to be aware. The word before that was present. So it's kind of all builds on each other. Mm -hmm. And the meditating part has helped me slow down. Mm -hmm. and realize I don't know. I don't have to keep doing things to be mm -hmm. successful. You know, I don't have to just do, 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 do. I can actually slow down. And in our KW Keller Williams world, we have a thing called our, these bold laws mm -hmm. and one of them says be, do, mm -hmm. achieve. And uh, mm -hmm. they revamped it. And really it's now be, 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 do, achieve. So there's a lot more joy in the being and find the joy in the being yeah. of finding joy in the doing. I used to find my self-worth and my achievements in the doing piece. Yeah. Now I feel a lot more peace and at ease of, Hey, it's all about the being piece. Mm. Um, you know, they joke about we're human beings, not human doings. And just be comfortable sitting in the being piece uh, and the doing will come, you know, it'll, it'll doesn't mean, and that's, I think for us high achievers, uh, when I was at our, my last project, you course uh, a couple of weeks ago, that's something we all, a lot of these folks have, are running teams or, or very successful business owners. And yeah. we're all about doing, 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 doing. And we're also worried that if we start being, that our business is going to fall apart mm -hmm. or, you know, um, you know, you could even relate it back to relationship. You know, if, if we don't have date night every Friday, but let's say we did and we made sure that that, that was a doing it. We have to do this. We have to do this every Friday and we have to go out to dinner every Friday. Um, but we made, it ended up being a chore because we're trying to figure out a way to do that. Um, it probably be much more advantageous to be, be with my spouse in the kitchen for 15 minutes and really connect right at the deep level then think we have to do all this stuff right mm -hmm. that goes that goes so much farther than um than the doing mm. there's a lot there's a lot no i mean it's interesting because i'm sure if you know people listening if you can relate to this this underlying anxiety of um an industry that we're in that is you know there you have you have to constantly be networking and prospecting and communicating and facebooking and instagramming and being doing all the time like you just cannot stop because we don't have hours that you check in and check out right this is right. a and i think that's where that struggle comes in and where um you know figuring out that balance is always i mean every agent that we've coached or um, partnered with who come on our team, the most difficult piece of becoming a real estate agent is realizing 
you know, that there's no line between your personal life and your professional life, that it's just, this is your life, right? And then finding the balance or counterbalance in all those things. And I do believe it takes years. I mean, I think that it's a process, but like Ed said, the more aware you can be that actually the truth is when you slow down, when you're present, when you're journaling in gratitude, when you're meditating to, to take that break and shut your mind down, you're actually going to be more clear and more productive than if you were to just keep go, 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 go. That, and, that's what everybody was telling me, you know, when I first started trying to do the meditating and this is for some crazy, highly successful business owners. And I didn't believe it at first. I'm like, right. yeah, there's no way. <laughs> and uh, it's true though. And the other thing that it's hard to explain without a whiteboard, but the level of anxiety this, we all have this level of anxiety, whether you know it or not. The more I've been meditating, the anxiety level keeps going down and down and down. Mm -hmm. And so that's like the bar keeps getting in lower and lower. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I could feel this relaxed all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Without reaching for other things. Yeah, exactly. There's no alcohol. There's no, you know, whatever. There's no outlet for that. It's just, it's okay, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's okay to stay at the house for an extra 15 minutes and read. I was really getting into this book this morning and finished, finished reading that chapter. The world's not going to come to an end if I, I not at the office at 901. Yeah. Well, I mean, I see agents even in on our own, our team, it's like we're in a meeting and they cannot stop checking their email. They can't stop checking their phone. They can't stop. And it's, it's something that we all should be aware of as we go into this new year is um, taking that time to make sure you're, you're taking care of yourself, that you're breathing, that you're eating properly, that you're sleeping properly, that you're journaling, that you're meditating, um, you're exercising. Uh, and I lived many, many, many years like many people where it was, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And if you say that in your head over and over and over again, um, a couple of years ago, I actually said, I'm no longer going to say those words out loud. Yeah. Um, when people ask me how I am, I'm not going to say I'm busy. I'm not going to say out loud that I don't have time because what I'm doing is, is I'm just living in this perpetual cycle. I mean, the truth is, is we do have time. Um, and we're learning and growing and we're learning how to incorporate healthy habits into our life. And I think it goes back to how much you want to put on your plate or keep putting on your plate. And I think we're a lot of us, uh, I don't want to say achievers. That's the wrong word. Just everybody. I think there's, people there's so many people, are, our society, the way we're wired yeah. is, you know, to be successful, you've got to have, your kids in 18 different activities. You've got to, you've got to be, you know, got to be at the gym. You got to do this. You got to do that. Then you've got to, you know, go to work and they have to be in 15 different nonprofits. I mean, at, at some point you never get a chance to be no. if you're doing all that. No. And you're not setting a great examples for your kids either. You're just running around like chickens with your heads cut off and right. not having true, deep, meaningful experiences. Right. If you're, if you're pushing yourself that thin, but I think that's part of our Western culture has really beat that into our heads. That that's how you have to be successful. That's the definition of success. And that's so not true. It's just, it's true. I'm learning. It's really just the opposite. It's that. an illusion and it it's really, it, it can be a really difficult, um, it's difficult to go against that, that natural flow of our culture and society and not get stuck thinking that that's the way we need to be because really in you slowing down, has your productivity or business suffered from you slowing down? No, <laughs> I would say what happens is you then go to start really picking the important things, that whole 80, 20 rule. Or if you've read the book, the one thing you start getting really hyper-focused on, Oh, I know meditating is important. I know I still work out. You know, and um, 
all these other things. And, um, but your, your 20%, your activities that you know, you're supposed to be doing rise to the top and you, and you get those done. So what I've seen happen is a lot of the busy work has kind of fallen off mm. and, or gotten delegated so mm-hmm. that, that way I can still focus on, you know, meditating time and getting focused and being, you know, building the business or spending time with the kids or whatever, whatever it happens to be. And I noticed it's, it's interesting for me unfold as it's been unfolding, you know, um, and again, because I've got one of these brains that just races and races and races and it always needs to be planning my next 10 minutes and what am I going to be doing here and all that, that actually goes back to, yeah, I, I was, you know, curled up in bed with our nine-year-old, you know, just sitting there talking with him and really listening to what he's saying and really having this connection eye to eye and heart to heart. And um, I've really noticed that over the last couple of years happening a lot more again, because of being able to slow down and become Mm -hmm. super aware and be super present. Mm -hmm. And again, our customers realize it too. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm, if I'm talking with a customer, I'm not, you know, got 15 screens open on my screen. I'm, you know, focusing on what their needs are, what their, or my team member, you know, if I have a team member coming in, we're talking, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to be really present and focused in on, on the conversation. Yeah. So, uh, are there any other, um, personal growth things that you've implemented that, that you think were really positive and, um, and actually helped you in your business world? Yeah. So I, I think we're, you and I are both very learning based. So, and yeah. every, it shows everybody on our team yeah. and that's how we, you know, one of the core values you have to have to get on their team, our, our team. Uh, and I think it's, it's huge in that. Um, I've really, I, I, in the last say 10 years for sure, mm-hmm. but even more so in the last say couple, I've really ramped up my reading. In high school, I was never a reader. I I never read. I read the bare bone minimums. And if then I bought the cliff notes and, you know, I was not into reading. And, you know, I think with all the different platforms you have now, whether you can use your Kindle, you can do your audio books. I I actually, it's funny. I've not mentioned this to you even yet, Jules, is that uh, the last book, the book I'm reading right now is paperback. I'm going, hmm. I like this. I might go back to more paperbacks. I'm enjoying actually touching the book, feeling it, flipping the pages. And uh, mm-hmm. so I, I think reading, being an avid reader, being an avid, um, pick three or four different podcasts. That yeah. Do- taking in new information and, and, and listening and being curious and open-minded. I, I see that in you is like, you don't know everything. You're like, wow, what is this person saying? Oh, that's interesting. How can I implement that? You know? And building in your schedule. So making time to do that. Cause right. that's the first thing that falls off everybody's schedule is we all yeah. know we need, most people know they need to be learning based, especially if you're running a business or, um, we're, we're, all running our we're, own we're, we're listening to a parenting book. You know I mean? There's, we're, there's always things to be curious about. Cause I'm, I'm not the best parent. I'm not the best spouse. I'm not the best team, you know, business owner. Uh, there's always opportunities for me to grow in those areas. Right. And right. I make it a point to take 30 minutes a day, at least in, in, and focus in on one of those categories and try to learn something. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that I've, I, I'm very much into audible. I probably have 10 books going right now and podcasts. And I really just decide for my personality type, I just decide what am I in the mood to, to, to take in today. And I listen to it when I drive and I listen to it, um, you know, in the morning or I do a devotional, um, just, you know, open mindedness and curiosity, I think are in, I think they come once you start to slow down. I think Mm -hmm. that, when when you're when you're operating at max capacity or beyond, which I think a lot of us are operating beyond our max capacity, um, there's only enough room for stress, anxiety, um, just 
needs for outside comfort because you cannot calm down. And I know I lived in that world for a very long time. And a lot of you know my story where it was, I came home every night and had to drink wine because I was just like so ah, all day long, you know, because we push, 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 push. Um, Cause that's what I thought I needed to do to be successful. Um, right. And so changing that and slowing down and like Ed said, paying attention to like being present, how you are here is how you are everywhere. Right. It's another bold yeah. block. I mean, if you're in a meeting, just be in that meeting. You don't have to be afraid of what you're missing. You don't have to be afraid that your whole world is going to fall apart. You don't have to be afraid that your clients, if you don't call them in two minutes after they called you, um, you actually called me out on that the other night, which I think was a good eye opener. And I, I want to share this is um, someone texted me and we were sitting down at the end of the night and I was like, I have to text them back. And you're like, why? I'm like, cause they texted me. And, and really, if you think about that, like that's not you in control of your, your life and your time and your emotions, that's other people controlling your life and your time and your emotions, which adds to your stress and adds to your anxiety and adds to like stealing away your peace. Right. And yeah, I mean, we've not even gone down that whole path of this thing. Right. I mean, <laughs> um, that's yeah. a whole another thing that we're both still, I've gotten better about yeah. it. Uh, right. As when I'm at home, I'm going to be at home and I'm not going to, you know, I might check it once after dinner and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm probably going to not gonna respond to anybody unless I absolutely need to. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be interesting to see in 10 or 15 years to see how we've rewired our brains with these crazy phones right. and not being able to shut it, down, shut it down and take a step away from it. They're going to be going back to saying we were all crazy for having these things attached to us. You know, I asked our team the other day, could you wake up in the morning and not touch your phone for the first two hours? And everybody just like go, went, their hearts just, the, the air fell, fell out of the room. It was like, no, they, they right. couldn't do that. Right. Right. And, you know, I, I think that's healthy not to touch your phone for the first two hours in the morning. There's not, you know, if somebody really needs you, they're probably already in your house and you already know about it. And if they didn't, it can wait two hours. Right. Yeah. So well, I, think I mean, and, and also, like you said, if you, when you're with your kids or you're, you're like, Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm in this real estate industry so that I can go to my kids games and be present, but you're on your phone the whole time. They, they, they notice. They know that that is not okay. You might as well just not go because I actually think it's worse that you show up and you're not really? present. And I and caught myself when okay. I took our 12 year old to swimming and there was like one or two things I had to do just to kind of finish up the day. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be on my phone just for a minute. Cause I've got to get this done. And yeah. then I, I put it down and I watched him look over at me probably 10 times. Mm -hmm. to make sure that I was not on my phone to say, they don't see that I was engaged. Yeah. And yeah, cause none of the other parents were, and no. I used to not always be engaged. So I not, like, I'm just, it's, it's a, it's a thing I'm working on as well. Like everybody else. Um, but well, it, it goes same thing with your, if you're with a customer, if you're with your spouse, if you're with another, you know, realtor, if you're at dinner with somebody, yeah. you know, it's, it's be there. Well, and I think that there's a deeper issue of what are you going to lose? Are you scared? What are you afraid of mm -hmm. by not being present? Right. And, um, and and it's just something to think about. And I think that that, you know, the more that you can incorporate some of these things into your life, the more peace that you'll find. And I think the more you'll enjoy this industry as a whole, you know, right. it's like the success actually will start coming more to you than if you were in that cycle of anxiety and stress and all the things. Um, so Ed, what other last advice would you give um, in terms of what you've learned this past year? I know you're still on a growth journey and you're not going to stop. So we're going to keep growing. Um, Never ends. I think that's something is, you know, we talk about this all the time is getting comfortable, being uncomfortable. Mm. You learn, you know, as you're peeling this onion back, 
And like I said, okay, now I need to be present, but I need to be aware to be present. And now I need to slow down. I'm now excited to figure out, okay, what's going to be the next thing that actually has to happen that gets exposed in, in you know, I, I get to see, oh, that's the next layer that I've got to peel back. So it never ends. And just being comfortable with that, that's ne that it never ends. And, uh, you know, for me, a couple of the, you know, the growth journey, going through this project U course has been amazing. Mm -hmm. So you can always look that up. You just look yeah. up project U. there's project U and project U unbound. So there's two different courses there. Yeah. Uh, reading Eckhart Tolle's books. I don't know if the names of them flew right out of my head as I was thinking about this, but Michael Singer's books have been phenomenal. Podcast. He's got, they both actually have podcasts. Mm -hmm. If you don't, um, and you can actually listen to the audio books and they have the podcast. Um, uh, Adam Hergenrather, who runs this Project U course, also has this new book, The 200% Life, um, yeah. which has been it's your guide to spiritual growth and business success without meditating at a mountaintop. So, <laughs> you know, the thought is you, right. you can actually have both. Oh, my gosh. We don't have need to go sit like, you know, somebody up in a cave with a robe, you know, on a mountaintop. Uh, no, you there's practical you know, life will give you things to work on every 10 minutes of your day um, mm -hmm. so that you can actually have, um, you know, uh, things exposed to you that need to be, that you need to let go of so mm -hmm. that you have a better spiritual experience, which then leads to a better experience with relationships, which then leads to better business. So it all goes, goes hand in hand. So these, these are all, um, his concept is this 200% life. It's 100% outer life, which is this interacting with my spouse, interacting at work, interacting with our customers, building a business, and then the whole 100% inner things that are going on with that little voice in my head telling me, no, I can't go do that, or you should go do that, or go, you're successful over here. No, why don't you go start a restaurant or, or whatever? It's all those little things that are that are going on in there and, and how to help work through a lot of that. So it's been, it's been a fun journey. That's for sure. And I can't wait to see where it continues to go. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you. That was just the tip of the iceberg because we don't have, we could sit here and talk about it all day long, which we pretty much do anyways. Uh, so I'm sure we'll, I'll have you back. We'll talk more. Um, I can't wait. Yeah, I know you can. It's so exciting. And obviously if anyone wants to ask Ed questions about what he's been doing or the books or the podcast or anything like that, always feel free to reach out to him. It's ed at edhuffteam.com. And you're always free to reach out to me, Julie at Julie Huff Team. No, it's not true. Julie at edhuffteam.com. I'm still trying to get that name changed, but I can't yet. I'm I know you it. would love it. <laughs> all for it. All right, everybody have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much.